G'day, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast, exclusively brought to you by the Oz American Aces. It's Dunks here, one of your hosts, and joined online by my best mate, Adzi Trelaw. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm going well, mate. It's been an um, interesting week uh, for myself and for the footy club, but outside of that, going really well. As I've um, touched on in recent episodes, um, Georgie and the girls are down here, so it's uh, good having them here. We um, actually went to the aquarium today, so took Georgie to the aquarium and the best thing about the aquarium, I believe, is probably the sharks and the stingrays, and they've actually closed that off for the time being. So I was a little bit flat about that, but um, nonetheless, Georgie loved it. She was a big fan of the jellyfish, so may have to get a jellyfish uh, fish tank. What do you reckon? Geez, that'd be a bit extreme, wouldn't it, at home? But, <laughs> mate, it wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. You would do something like that for, you, <laughs> for Georgie. Yeah, well, I would. I would. Whatever she wants, I'm a, I'm a sucker for it. If she wants a present or a toy or... Whatever it is, I end up getting it for her. She wanted a Finding Nemo toy as we were walking out and walked out and she goes, oh, there's the Nemo. Can I grab it? I was like, all right, go grab it. And she walked past a turtle. She goes, oh, no, I want the turtle. I was like, oh, you can only grab one. So she grabs the turtle, puts the Finding Nemo back, goes to the front, goes to pay for the – I I go and pay for the turtle. And she goes, oh, but I like that penguin over there. Can I get that penguin too? And I was like, no, you can't have that. She goes, oh, please. So then I walked over, got her the penguin. So – (laughs) <laughs> Promised her one gift and she walks out with two. So, yeah, anything for little Georgie girl. Oh, yeah, too good, mate. Too soft in my eyes. No, I, I know. I know. <laughs> how, was, uh, how was your week? Yeah, it was good. I Well, we played Friday night, so I got the opportunity to go back home to the farm after that. So we drove back on Friday night after the game. Mum and Dad obviously came to watch and Lara and Tipper were with it, them as well. So we went back to Yarram and got home at about, I think it was 2 a.m. or 2.30 a.m., Saturday morning, so I got the sleep in and woke up on the farm, which is nice in the yeah the country air, yeah, mate. You know what it's like down there. Saw the house and um, everything that's going on, been happening around there. So it was nice to just you know really wind down and catch up with some family and friends. Went to the Woody Pub on Saturday night, yes, the yes. Woodside Beach Hotel, which I'm involved in and a lot of people know. So um, that was a good feed and got the traditional chicken parma, mate, which was beautiful. So. Uh, it was it was nice. It was very wholesome to get back there and and spend time with family, as I said. But um, yeah, now back into the grind and back into the swing of things, which is which is good. Oh, that's great. I was a, I was a little bit jealous. It's funny because Kimmy said on the Saturday because we obviously played on the Sunday. Captain yeah. John, you know what it's like. It's obviously like a you know you only go go in for a couple of hours. I was like, oh, what are you going to do today? She goes, I'm probably going to drive down to the farm with Lara. And I was like, and Josh, and I was like, are you serious? <laughs> I'm playing tomorrow. It's not like it's a day trip. You've got to go there, stay and come. She goes, yeah, I might just go down. Don't worry about your game. I was like, oh, thanks, Kimmy. But um, but no, she didn't <laughs> end up going down. Uh, did you find some time to – because remember last time we were down there, we spent the – it was during last year's bye, bye week. Did you find some time to um cut up some wood and chop up some wood like we did in the forest? No, nah, we didn't do any of that. We actually did no jobs at all, mate. So it was oh, it was a, a bit different to last time because we yeah we worked pretty hard, didn't we, in that bye week? Because oh, um, you did, us, you did, up. I did. Well, you pretended as as always. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, it was good. It was very nice just to get that get back there. And uh, mum and dad hadn't seen us for a while, so to see them, and I think they might come up here in a couple of weeks' time too. So looking forward to seeing them again soon. Yeah, that, that's uh, no doubt. You loved it. How's the? You mentioned the hotel. How's it going? How's the pub going? It's going well. Yeah, we're. I think we're into like the stage two of the um, the investment. So I think they we're they're building a uh, like an events shed across the road, so people can have like all their events and stuff there. You know, eighteenth birthdays, whatever, like weddings, stuff like that. Um, in that shed, and then out the back, there's going to be a few. Uh, like sort of one bedroom little apartment things for accommodation for the pub. So when all that gets done, and I'm sure we'll get a few more people down from Melbourne and everywhere else to to get down to the iconic Woodside Beach Hotel, mate, it'd be nice. Before we uh, move on to the footy, is there anything else interesting that happens throughout the week for you or we get stuck into the footy? Because there's obviously plenty to talk about. I, I wrote down a couple of things uh, before we get oh, into yeah. the footy stuff. Far away, mate. I had a, I had a funny moment and – it's like you know what it's like when you post a post game. The next day, you, you know you might get asked to do media or something, and um, I got asked to go on SEN with a few of the boys on there. And uh, it was Saturday morning, and you know just went and got me morning coffee, and I was ready to get on radio, so I jumped on, and I'm talking away, getting asked questions, and all of a sudden, 
uh, Jared Waitley just goes, and thanks, Josh. Thanks for having, thanks for coming on. And it was like I was midway through what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened? Mate, I was live on air. So I was just like, I just went silent and I just didn't know what to do. I've never experienced anything like it. <laughs> so so let me put this into context. You're mid answering a question, essentially, and yeah. he just cut you off. <laughs> yeah, it was like, thanks, Josh. Thanks for jumping on. And then it was like, that was it. And then it just went silent in my, on my phone. And I was like, what happened? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I reckon would have happened. The producer in his ears probably going, he's probably talking too long. You need to hurry yeah. this up, hurry this up, and then time limits run out. Yep, we've got to let him go. See you later. Was there a follow-up message yeah. or anything from anyone? Yeah, nah. Hodgie, Hodgie reached out because he asked me the last question. Apparently, he wasn't meant to ask me the last question and because oh. like, it sort of it went too long. So, he was yep. like, sorry, mate. <laughs> I wasn't meant to ask that last question, but hey, I've never had an experience like it. I was just like, what is that? Like, I yeah. just didn't know what oh, to do or say. At least it wasn't on TV or on live TV. At least you didn't have to awkwardly stand there and be like, okay, see you later then. <laughs> That's a lot more interesting than anything that I had because obviously we had a uh, interesting weekend with our result. Um, we'll start with, uh, we'll go to footy now. We'll start with uh, your, obviously, your weekend and oh, your footy. Yeah. Your footy game on Friday, obviously, played against a uh, a very formidable side in Collingwood who, um, you know, are very hard to beat in general and obviously you faced them in Melbourne at Marvel. Um, would have been would have been nice if, from a spectacle point of view, um, if the game was at the MCG. No doubt you probably would have liked that a little bit more because you don't get to play at the MCG much. Um, yeah. But that's obviously not, wasn't the case. Yeah. Um, Obviously, we were able to come away with a win and had a very strong performance again yourself. How did you, um, yeah, how did you find the game? Yeah, it was good. You know, as you said, a good opportunity to get down to Melbourne as a group again and um, against a, a massive team in the Pies who have been going well this year, albeit they had a couple of outs um, this week. But I still think, you know, good sides, they always have the players in the reserves or that aren't getting a game that can come in and really play good roles for the team. So, irrelevant of the names that are out, I still feel like, you know they were going to bring their best footy, and they did. I thought they played, they played pretty well, and um, their pressure, mate, is something else. Like to mm. to try and uh, withstand that, it's like consistent, just pressure, 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 and then as soon as the ball gets out, they're quick to swarm onto it, and then get it moving forward. So it was good to experience that finals like pressure, I guess you could say, and um, for us to really be able to stand up to it and. And play the way that we wanted to, and you know, kick a really good score in the end um, was was promising. And there's still a few things we'll take out of the game that we need to tidy up a little bit defensively, and you know, in the contest. But all in all, I thought, you know, the boys did really well. We played very well as a team, and um, that even contribution I felt like was probably down the last couple of weeks. And I talked about it on here, you know, individually and as a midfield group, especially I felt like we've been down. So to have that even contribution again was really nice. So. A great win for us as a club, but um, yeah, that's in the past now, and we look forward to what's to come. Yeah, well, I feel like you nailed that. Their pressure is even you can just see from a um, spectacle point of view, it's it's right up there. It's probably the best in the comp. And sometimes, what teams fall into when they play the Pies, and I know we did definitely um, when we played them earlier in the years, the perceived pressure, and sometimes yeah. because their pressure is so high. You feel like there's always going to be pressure when you get the ball, so you may rush into a disposal or rush into a decision that you're going to make. So the fact that you guys guys were able to withstand that and then ultimately use the ball really well, that's something I noticed from from your game, especially from back half. Like you, you know, I, I reckon it was probably one of the best games. You moved the ball well against quality opposition. Um, you know, Collingwood aren't easy to score against, and the way you're able to move it really crisp, crisp like no pun intended, Jack Crisp, but move it really crisp-like and, um, you know, give your forwards a good opportunity. It was unreal. Is it something that, you know, you guys had, I guess, been working on a little bit or coming into this game where you, you just – I know you pride yourself on moving the ball well, but did you narrow in a little bit more? Because that's exactly what it seemed like, uh, again, from a spectacle point of view. Yeah, without giving too much away, definitely want to, you know, be able to move the ball around and, and you know, slice through defences. I feel like each week it's a different outlook because you – Teams defend differently, and the pies, you know, mm. defend with a zone. And I think most most of the teams up that top end, of the ladder would have a zone sort of press that they have defensively. So 
to be able to pick our way through that was really good on the night. But um, I just thought our, you know, their pressure resulted in us maybe giving the ball up, but then our pressure to then win it back and then go forward and, you know, get guys like Charlie Cameron, Cam Rayner, I thought was really important for us. And Zach Bailey and, you know, the list goes on. Link McCarthy played a really good role. So, um, yeah, it was just promising that we were able to sort of get the turnover, turnover game going for us, which is rather than it being a bit of a stoppage game, it was more of that. So, mm. um, yeah, promising signs. But as I said, look forward to this week now and then, um, yeah, see how we go against the Saners. What about your own game? I know uh, you've been a bit harsh on yourself the last few weeks and yeah, unbelievable first half. You were probably the best player on the ground in the first half and, as you said, Ended up being probably an even spread of obviously contributions from um, all your midfielders inside, and obviously Lockie Neal has publicly come out and said that he's been a little bit down as well, which is very hard for him to say that because he probably holds such a high standard of himself, and he's his average game, I suppose, is probably as good as anybody's game. So he came out and obviously was outstanding. But what about your your own game? How did you see that? I know you obviously spoke about it a little bit last week. Yeah, it was it was a lot better. I mean, just had simple focuses this week to. Um, you know, just get back to my best football and that's just hunting the footy and, and pressuring the opposition. I feel like I've been doing the defensive side of stuff well. It was probably more just the offensive side. So being able to go and win the footy was something that I just went into the game focusing on. And um, as you said, yeah, started off really well and then probably hit a bit of a lull in the third quarter because they got on top a little bit around the contest and especially from center bounce. But then, you know, felt like we finished, well, I finished um, the game off strongly and, uh, it was nice to be able to play my role in in the team's really promising win. So back to uh, where I want to be, mate. Playing that consistent football is um, the main thing. So for me, look forward to this week now, and um, yeah, hopefully being able to stack those performances up and then leading into finals. So yeah, it was nice, as I said earlier, to get back on track as a as a midfield group um, led by Locke, who played a really outstanding game, and um, the rest of the boys in there were really good too. So I uh, just got to keep it going. No, well done, mate. I um I watched very closely, as you know, and I thought you were again unbelievable. Hopefully, uh, right up there in the best and fairest, which would be nice. And there's a few games left for you. Um, one more question for your game, Devin Robinson, when he had his shirt ripped off, where were you? And how's the feedback been post game? Because he had something like, did he have like ten thousand followers follow him since that incident? Nah, so now it's gone up to so he started at ten. Step ten K was his I think he was actually just under ten, so nine K. It's now gone up to like if I check now, I checked yesterday, it was forty five thousand followers. You joking. Yeah, forty seven yeah, thousand so right now. So he's <laughs> gone up what's that? Thirty seven thirty seven thousand. Which oh is just gosh, incredible. That's incredible. But I was I was like sliding back to help out the the backs because he gave away the free kick like I was holding the ball and then he threw his jumper and I was just never running back. I was like, what is he doing? Like sprinting <laughs> back to the back line and then all of a sudden they kicked it in. But it's just funny to see all the the photos and all the media attention, I suppose you could call it, outside of um, the game because, yeah, it was, a, it was a very iconic moment. I think a lot of people are talking about it being, you know, something that never happens in footy. I feel like it's happened a mm. little bit, but it's just probably – I don't know, Friday night lights, maybe yeah. oh, the, the media think, got around I a think, little bit more. I think the fact that he kept trying to play and even when even when the runner looked like he was coming out to give him the jumper during the stop pitch, he's like, nah, nah, I'm just going to play with it, which like I don't mind because you're so caught up in the heat of the moment, you want to keep playing. But um, I feel like that was probably why you're saying it's a bit iconic because he just wanted to keep playing. Um, did he? What was he like afterwards? Is he the type to... Love it, and you know, yeah, I'll get, I'll cop the attention. Or is he kind of like, nah, I don't want that. Or what is he like? He's a bit in between. I think he would he would like it. He sort of embraced it a little bit, but then he's sort of like, oh, don't really like <laughs> what all this kind of stuff. Um, but he's he's a good man. So yeah, it's it's yeah, it's funny. It Fags actually said after the game, it would be um, I'm sure there was I don't know how many were there, like forty thousand or something. Were at the at Marvel Stadium that night. He's like, I'm sure there would have been forty thousand. Um, people in the stands very happy with Dev running around with his shirt off for five minutes <laughs> after the game. So well, it was uh, maybe that's was where good. the forty thousand followers have uh, have come from. Um, but yeah, it was an, it was an incredible moment. 
not only was it a great win, but it was a uh, a funny spectacle to watch that little five, ten, fifteen second period. It was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it was a good night. It was a good night, mate. But um, moving on to your game now, let's uh, let's get through it. Um, obviously, a bit of a tough one to talk about, and the wash up and everything's been highly publicised. But I just want to start with you first. Talk about yourself because you know, watching from afar and obviously knowing the person that you are, mate, you're doing everything you possibly can for the team. And um, I thought you had a fantastic game and probably should have been one of the best players on the ground in my eyes. But tell us tell us what it was like out there and we'll go into the rest as it unfolds. Yeah, to, well, to be honest with you, it was one of those moments where, I don't know, you, you kind of finish the game and you walk off and you just kind of feel... Um, embarrassed in a way that you let yourself down and your teammates down and and most importantly let your fans down and you know we never go out there wanting to do that you know we we love well we love each other but we love our fans and um you know we we appreciate all the support they give us and the care and and whatnot they show throughout the year and um it's always hard when you feel like you let your fans down and and it's definitely one of the games where um you know, where, where I felt like we let our fans down and let ourselves down. Um, you know, I probably took the loss personally as hard as I've ever taken a loss. I mean, I know you don't wouldn't mind me sharing, but we'd obviously teed up to catch up with each other after the game. But, mate, I was that that flat. I mean, you had a flight to get to, but I was that flat that I just didn't want to show my face really because I just feel, um, you know, just so embarrassed that, you know, we – I guess, put in a performance that we just weren't proud of. And, you know, before I touch on us, you know, I don't want to discredit the Eagles. They they clearly, mm. you know, came with a plan and, um, you know, played the way they wanted to play. And they were good around the footy. They used the ball way better than us. And, and they thoroughly deserve to win. And not at all am I, am I going to discredit a team that beat you because they deserve to win. But, um, yeah, the performance that we put in was just extremely disappointing um, considering what, is on the line, um, you know, the fact that, you know, e- even the fact that our finals chances are still alive, it's, it's, it still blows my mind a little bit because we just haven't played well enough in these last two weeks to even, I guess, warrant to be, warrant a spot to be there. But, um, yeah, it was just an extremely tough loss, one where, um, you know, w- we're just very, very, very disappointed in how we've performed because we just know where we're such a, you know, when we play, and, I, and I, again, I sound like a broken record. I've, I've said this pretty much every single week that we've lost. But when we play the way we want to play, we're such a, a hard team to play against. And, you know, I've got no doubt you, you, you would have experienced that against us in round three. And, and there's teams out there that would have experienced that against us when we're actually playing how we want to play and not worrying about other stuff where we're a hard team to beat. And, yeah, the fact that we weren't able to do that um, – you know, it's just yeah. It still still stings a bit now because it's obviously only two get two days post game and still so very raw. And and you just want to get out there this week and um, you know, it's not about proving people right or wrong, or whatever it may be. It's just about putting in a good performance that we can be proud of. And it shouldn't matter who we're coming up against. It really shouldn't. It doesn't matter who we're playing, as long as we take care of how we want to play and what we want to bring. It's and if we bring that. The result and whatever it comes with it takes care of itself. So, yeah, it, uh, it's, it was a tough one, a very tough one, a bit of pill to swallow for us. Yeah, and um, it would have felt like a bit of, not deja vu, but we talked about early in the year the Carlton supporters um, mm. getting into the boys, walking off the ground. I saw some vision on social media over the last couple of days with some of the fans. How was that? Like We, we spoke about it from yeah. um, a uh, supporter's view but now you're actually involved in it. Like, talk us through that moment because, yeah, it must have been pretty hard to to be involved in. Yeah, oh, it was. It was, man. I don't, you know, I, I've i been a part of, obviously, Collingwood who, you know, have a, an enormous fan base and, you know, I've, mm. I've seen it a little bit. I've seen it, um, you know, when when uh, the fans get extremely passionate and, and kind of let their voices be heard and kind of what comes with the game. I understand it. I get it. I, I, I get it. I totally get it. And as I said, extremely disappointed in how we play and, and no doubt um, our fans are disappointed and, and I feel like we let our fans down and, and ourselves down and um, was totally expecting um, 
you know, was expecting as we were walking off for them to, I guess, get stuck into us. But some of the stuff that gets said, I, I never think that it's, um, you know, I, I, I can accept fans being disappointed. I can accept fans, you know, maybe critiquing the game or whatever it may be. I can understand that because people are passionate and they love their footy and they love their footy club. But whenever it gets personal or whenever it gets um, – the character gets involved, when someone has a go at the character and, you know, everyone at our footy club and at most footy clubs are, are great people. And at our footy club, we have great people. We really do. We have good people who have good hearts, who love one another, one another, support one another and, yeah, are just great people. And whenever character gets brought in from our fans, that's probably when it's the most disappointing, when – you know, they personally have a goal at the person or the character. And, you know, I never think that's fair. I never think it's um, warranted towards the person. And, you know, don't get – for the people who are obviously going to listen and watch this, don't get this wrong. I understand – I don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I understand you can have a voice and have a passion about how we're playing and, you know, talk about, you know, footy footy stuff, footy-specific stuff. But when you go at the person and the character, it's just never warranted. And – no, I don't care. It's a game of football. Like it, it's not, you know, a, a person's character or the or who they are as a human should never come into it. And without going into what stuff was being what was being said and what stuff was said to the players, because mate, I heard some horrendous stuff as we we're walking off. Absolutely horrendous stuff to certain individuals. It's never warranted, and um, that I can't. You know, that is just yeah, can't live with that stuff. But the other stuff I understand. So like, to answer your question. Uh, how how was it? It's never nice. It's obviously never nice because you never want to let yourself or the fans down. I get it. Fans are passionate and they care. And as we touched on with, with Carlton earlier in, on in the season, um, things can turn. Um, but we know, you know, our, and, and there's been a, 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 an array of messages from a lot of Western Bulldogs fans who have stuck by us and will always stick by us because they know that it is just a game at the end of the day. And that is what people have got to understand. It really is a game at the end of the day. And I love this game and I, and I live and breathe footy and I love footy and I want to win at all costs and I never want to lose and never want to let everyone to, anyone down. But the reality is there's going to be times where you don't win or there's going to be periods where you don't play good enough footy. And unfortunately, we've had that that last couple of weeks. And I get it. You can have your opinion and, and footy-wise, give it. You know, Tell us. We expect that as fans, but when it comes to the person and the character, just don't do it. And yeah, I, I'm just not a big fan of that stuff. So yeah, it was it was a lot of the stuff was um was hard to hear, but um yeah, we know we've still got a great fan base who love us, support us. Will you know the old cliche, ride or die with us? Yeah, it's not like you're going out there like we said early in the year with Carlton. It's not like they're going out there and not trying. It's like mm. you gotta you gotta give the boys a bit of slack there and um. They're, yeah, they're putting in their heart and soul to every game, every week, everything that they do, every session. So, uh, yeah, it's disappointing to see another video like that out there in the public domain. But um, I'm sure you boys will bounce back this week and and really rally rally around each other and um, yeah, go down to the cattery and break a 20 year drought. I think it is. Yeah, mate. Well, we've got no no choice really. We have to um, be prepared to do that. And yeah, and as I said, the best thing about a footy club is. Um, you know, the camaraderie and the mateship that you, I guess, form and um, the bonds that you build through the times that are tough and where you are facing a bit of adversity. And, you know, I know externally there's, there's you know, we're probably the most talked about team at the moment in, in Melbourne and and it's it's fair enough because that's footy and, um, you know, footy is obviously dominant here. It's the dominant sport here and we expect that. And, um, as, as I've just said a million times, I'll say it again, I hate letting ourselves down and our fans down when we can play and perform so much better. So, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm still very optimistic and very, um, you know, positive minded and, and have no, like, and, 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 and I'm not being naive here. I genuinely believe that when we play our best footy, we're as good as, you know, any team in the competition. We just have to do it for longer. So, yeah, I'm, um, you know, a, a week can be a long time in footy and, and right now it feels like a long time because we all just want to get to the game and, and as I said before, not even worry about anything other than 
putting our best foot forward and playing the brand of footy that we want to play and letting the 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 scoreboard look after itself. And and that's you know that's how the mindset should be. So yeah, mate, really really looking forward to this week's game. Yeah. Um. What does this week look like for you? Does it is it a little bit different? Because you know I feel like some of the boys and even the coach, the staff would be feeling. You know the the outside noise a little bit, all that pressure. Is it is it is it a shorter week? Is it you know? Do you come in more? What are you doing? No, I think yeah. Obviously, there's you know, as I said, we all we all um rally together and 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 support each other and um. But you, but then again, you don't try and change too much. I mean, we can't because we've got a six day break, so physically we can't change too much. But um, no, we got together. We had a bit of lunch today. Um, you know, today is obviously our recovery day, two days post game. And, you know, it's nice. It's nice to just to sit there and, and actually have lunch together where, you know, went off site and um, enjoyed each other's company. And, um, you know, and, and that's not to mention how, you know, it's a bit ignorant of me not to mention how well our VFL program's going. We've just won 10 games in a row and, um, you know, have some had some unbelievable performances in that span of games. So, you know, it's not it's not all doom and gloom for our footy club. We've we've um you know we've able to win ten games in a row. We've got the the for our VFL program. We've got the um you know the buy this week and um really putting our best foot forward in 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 that competition, which is great. So you know to be able to talk to some of the boys playing VFL and just talk you know just talk life. You know when when you face those challenges yeah. to actually get away from footy with your teammates, it can be hard because you're walking into the footy club and you know you're what comes to mind? Oh, the result on the weekend. So it's nice to get away and, you know, I'll sit with Crosby, one of our favorites, and we were just talking NFL and, you know, talking, um, just talking life in general about him and his favorite holiday spots and him going to Bali. He's probably going to go to Bali again this year, which is, which is his favorite spot. So yeah, other than that, you know, get to the main session on, on Thursday and then it's, you know, training as hard as we can and doing everything we can possible to prepare well for a game against Geelong. And as you said, we haven't won there in, you know, I think twenty years time, as you've said. So, um, it's a big challenge for us, but one we're really looking forward to. Yep. And touching on this week's game a little bit, do you want to talk more about uh, what you're expecting from the Cats? They've, I think they've said that there's going to be a couple of outs already, so um, that's good for you guys, I guess, in a way. But you'd probably be more focused on yourselves and and going oh, down yeah. there and doing something uh, together. Pretty special. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 You nailed that, Joshy. Freaking can't care about personnel and, and worry about you know who they're playing I mean worry about it when we're actually um, there and we know their side but obviously a proud bunch of supporters down there and they're obviously going to want to finish on a high note and um, Isaac Smith obviously playing his last game as well will want to go out um, on a high note and what's been a tremendous cr- a career for him and and I, I genuinely believe when teams know they're not going to play finals the next year um, and I'm not sure you might be the same if you've Oh, have you missed finals? You have maybe once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the last game, nice. you always one want to go out on a good note, so you want to win, obviously. And two, um, if you're playing a team that can make the finals, you want to beat that team. You know, you kind of want to spoil the party of them um, making finals, whatever it may be. So, yeah, I, I reckon. Um, I reckon you know they're going to come out firing and yeah, want to win for their fans. So, fully expecting it to be a. Um, you know, a red hot contest from the start. And um, as I said earlier, very, very optimistic about um, the week ahead and, um, you know, really looking forward to getting out there and, you know, just putting our best foot forward and, and hopefully um, getting the job done and giving ourselves a chance to, you know, play finals. Because if we do win, obviously, um, you know, we're, our season's obviously still alive for the night because then we'd have to wait for the, the Carlton GWS game. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a um, interesting weekend for us, but um, you know, ho- hope hopefully what we've been disappointed with the last two weeks can really motivate us to go out there and just perform as a group. Yeah, no, looking forward to to kicking back and watching that one after hours on uh, Saturday night. Uh, there's going to be a lot of games this weekend that are going to be Ooh. worth watching. I think Sunday they've designed it Sunday, so you come in, you start at twelve o'clock. I think the first yep. game is. Yep. Yep. And then you watch literally back to back to back. And then you can just tell they're just going to have the live ladder sitting yeah. there watching every single game. Yep. And yeah, the results are just going to flip everywhere and the ladder's going to change, which would be, uh, would be crazy to see. Yeah. Well, as I said, hopefully we, um, 
we obviously win and, and that could make it interesting because obviously the last game of the round will be depending on who makes the top eight. Um, fingers crossed. But what about you, mate? You obviously uh, – well, you guys are essentially vying for a top two, right? You, you can fall out of the top um, two and finish either third or fourth. So it's a big game. I mean, the Saints obviously qualified for finals last week and um, – yep. You know, it's been a little bit similar for them, a little bit down here where, you know, people were writing them off, you know, for a patch of of weeks there when they weren't playing their best footy. But we could see it. I know we were talking about that. You know, their their brand stacks up. I mean, they defend extremely well. Um, Ross Lyons obviously brought in a, a really good defensive edge. And um, I feel like the last couple of weeks watching them closely because they're 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 you know, you enjoy watching teams. I actually thoroughly enjoy watching St. Kilda because I feel like, you know, they move the ball extremely well. Guys like Jack Sinclair, Brad Hill, Mason Wood on the wing. Um, you know, they've got some quality players that are very highly skilled and if you let them get off the chain, they're going to hurt you. So, big game for you guys. Not only is the top, top as I said, top two on the line, but um, you definitely want to finish on a high note and, and being your last game at home for the home and away season. Obviously, finals is a different ball game. So you must be looking forward to the game. Yeah, no, you hit the nail on the head, mate. It's going to be a huge game for us. You, I know the um, the boys are really ready to go. You can tell already just from walking in the doors on Monday morning was just, you know, everyone's really got their sights set on this weekend and focused in on that and the rest – after that is not even being thought about at the moment. So um, that's always nice. And yeah, as you said, they've been playing some some really good football. St. Kilda and knocked off Geelong last week quite convincingly. They probably should have won by more, to be honest, watching that game back. Um, they moved the ball extremely well and defended well too. So uh, I've um, got no doubt they're going to come up here and they're playing for a home final too in a way mm, because they, I mm. think they could finish, they could finish uh, fifth or sixth if they mm. beat us and we could finish um, first or second if we beat them. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a huge game for both clubs and hopefully we can really take it up to them. Having played against them already this year, it's nice that, uh, you know, you can do a bit of research and that well, we've sort of already done our research on them a little bit, but to be able to um, to play them again in di- different circumstances, I feel is, uh, is going to be good for us. So uh, looking forward to the challenge, mate. And, keen to get out there on Saturday Arvo in that 435 slot. Yeah, no, I I definitely feel like it's going to be, you know, you talk about big games for the round. This is obviously a, another massive game. I feel like the finals like atmosphere and intensity is probably going to be, you know, through the roof. I feel like it's going to be one of those games where it's just hot from the from the start to the very end. For what it's worth actually, it's the first time you finish top 4. So, isn't it? Yeah, first time in your career you yeah, finish top 4. Well done, mate. You deserve yeah. a clap for that. That's great. Um <laughs> But what I'm saying is where do you like get the motivation because like to, to want to finish on a high note, and I know it's easy to say, you know, oh, because we can finish first or second, but, you know, you, you've locked into a top four spot. Regardless, you're going to get a second chance. Um, you get a home final regardless, no matter where, what week it may be. So with that all being said, what's your, yeah, what is like the motivation for you and the team? Um, to be honest, mate, I, I don't think the first or second uh, I guess situation is in our minds. I think it's more the winning factor. Like you just want to win as a team week in, week out as much as you possibly can. And that's been my mindset. I feel like it's been everyone's mindset from day dot of preseason, being able to build something that can win us games of football. And this week's no different to any other week. Like you can, you can listen to, all the people talk out there, listen to everyone that's, you know, looking at footy at the moment. It's like, oh, finals are coming up. Like, who's going to play who? Who's going to finish where? But for us, it's just about winning. And we just want to go out there and play our best footy. And hopefully that gets us the win. And more often than not this year, if, we played our, if we've played our best football, all that's got us the win. And that's what we'll be looking to do on, on Saturday afternoon. So, yeah, to answer your question, I feel like that winning focus is more than than anything else rather than looking and hearing and listening to that outside noise. Yeah, it's a great answer for, from you because you guys are, the reality is you're in a situation where you are vying for first or second and, you know, for you to openly say that, no, that's not the motivation. It's a great answer and, and it shows you that, you know, you talk about the process of things and, and letting the results take care of itself based off what you do. Um, it's clearly been evident for you guys. So, 
no, I, I can't wait to um, see the result. I don't. I won't be able to watch. I may be able to see the first bit of it, but um, I'll be watching closely. And no doubt you are. Uh, you'll be dominating and uh, sewing sewing up that best and fairest that I hope you can win. But um, <laughs> uh, any, anything else footy wise that um, you want to mention before we move into uh, some questions that we're going to answer from some of our fans? Yeah, I did have one thing that I wanted to talk about footy wise with you. Yes, did you go. watch? On Saturday, on Saturday night, the Adelaide situation with the Sydney Swans, yes, the goal. Yes, I did. I want your thoughts because I feel like you'll have a better answer than mine. All right. I just feel like if I was Adelaide, I would be doing everything in my power. I've seen a few people that have come out and said this, like everything in my power to, to do something. I know it's hard to do because you can't really change the game and the result because it was one minute to go. You never know what could have happened, but... On the night, I think they could have been like someone could have like stopped mm. the game or done something like yeah. to have a score yeah. of you. Oh, I yeah, yeah, oh, yes, I would. Yeah, if I was one of the players, because that that knocked them out of the finals. Yeah, if that goal gets countered, you're right. They probably win the game. I mean, who knows what happens in the last minute? But yeah, I mean, yes, I'm with you. Like there should have been something where. You can stop the game and and call it a goal, whatever. But I I don't like I I think that the game's too hard for you to be, for you to just stop it, you know. Like a minute later, it's just the fact that there was no um, there was no uh, score check to see if it was a goal. That's where obviously the mistake was made. I felt like like I felt like it was obvious to all of us watching at home that. Regardless, it just should have been a score review no matter what. So, to, like, it's hard, Joshy. It's hard to just stop the game. Could you imagine if they kick the ball out, play happens, a stoppage happens, and then the umpire just goes, oh, no, stop, by the way. A goal was scored. We've got to award Adelaide the goal and go back to the middle. Like, that would just be crazy. Yeah, but to be honest, that's a season on the line. I'm saying that's fine. I'm saying it's play on to stop the game and be yeah. like, hang on. Score review, that's – because what I'm thinking is we've just found a loophole in the score review system. The loophole yeah. is if you take – if you get the ball and play on before the umpire can blow their whistle and say a yeah, score review. Right, yes, yes. It's play on. Yes. So there's a loophole. So if you get the footy, yes. mate, just play on straight away. Take the ball, okay, keep well, going. I'm probably not the one to talk to about this. I hope all the AFL executives out there and everyone working on the board <laughs> is listening to this because, yeah, you're right. You are right, you know, and whether or not the Sydney players knew that it was a goal and they're thinking, oh, no, I've got to quickly kick this in because, yeah, you are right. I mean, it is a, it's a disastrous way for the Crows to obviously not qualify oh, because, you know, literally, literally their season ended with obviously that call. So, Yes, I. It's a hard one. I feel for. I feel for the crows. I feel for their um, fans and their supporters because, for what it's worth, they they would have been a scary opposition to come up against in the finals because mm. their footy is oh mate is as good as anybody's on their day. As good as anybody's, mate. Their their footy's very good, and we played them a couple of weeks ago, and they were one of the better teams I reckon we've played this year. So. Um, it's nah. disappointing for them, and I'm sure a lot of Adelaide fans will be disappointed, but I'm sure they'll be back next year, bigger and better. Yeah. I just think something, obviously, now will happen a lot more closely with the score review, whether it's literally every single goal or point is reviewed and looks like, do you know what I mean? Looks like it may be a yeah. goal or point. Everything just has to be reviewed because, obviously, it cost the team a season. Um, before we move on, I actually wanted to mention – something that happened today and uh, it's got announced. We've had some retirees. I know Tom Hickey retired, so congratulations to Tom Hickey, Tom Jonas, um, some some great players and servants of their footy clubs. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm missing someone else, but Josh Bruce from our footy club, he uh, is, well, my footy yeah. club and obviously one of your teammates, just uh, retired today and unfortunately didn't re- go out on his own terms, but wanted to give him a bit of love because um, – he, you talk about camaraderie and, and friendships and mateships and someone to lean on and be able to talk to. He um, is someone that was always a, uh, a shoulder to lean on for everyone, especially the younger guys. They love going to him and talking to him for guidance. I know he's had a massive um, 
you know, influence on Jamara's career so far and, and Naughty's career, they're extremely close. So um, much love figure of our footy club and um, I know you love playing with him and obviously I love playing with him at the Giants first and first days I played with him and, and obviously now um, the Western Bulldogs. So we love the big juice man. I um, It's sad to see him go but no doubt he's got um, exciting next chapter of his life um, and the, the best memory I always have of him is when he kicked 10 goals uh, against North <laughs> Melbourne and um, I know you played that game. It was an incredible game to be a part of because that last like 10 minutes of the game, we were just trying to get him the ball so we can kick his 10th goal. <laughs> yeah, that was unbelievable. And yeah, like you said, great fellow, great man. And we wish him all the best in the the next chapter of his life. Um, anything else before you move on, mate? Nah, nah. I want to get into these couple start bench cuts and then answer a few questions before we wrap it up because I love answering these questions because there's been some absolute rippers. Um, oh, but I want to do start, I want to do this start bench cut. There's a couple. There's a, uh, yeah, I've got two for us, right? And last week's um, one was actually really good. Got some great feedback with the um, Tiger Woods, um, MJ, and Tom Brady. Feel like they feel like they yeah. favoured you again, like always. But that's all right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, start bench cut. Ready, Abby. Ready. Abby Morris zero uh, zero one sent this in. Start bench cut. This is a good one. Powerade, Gatorade, or Maximus. Oh. <laughs> Give us your start uh, bench cut. Jeez. Um, only because I drink probably more Gatorade, I'm going to go start Gatorade, bench Powerade, and cut Maximus. Okay, I'm I'm totally agreeing with you. So there's no – I'm going to move on to the next one. So I'm glad we're on the same page as that one. Specific Gatorade, by the way, I'm going the grape Gatorade, I'm going the blue Powerade, and the Maximus – Actually, don't even know what flavor I go to the Maximus because they can't say <laughs> the Maximus <laughs> much. Um, this is a good one. So, start bench cut. This, well, this is the other one we'll do. This, so, this is from Rory McCarthy. Start, start bench cut AFL, NBA, NFL. Uh, as in, what do you support more or yeah, so listen to or watch? I'm going to say your favorite sport. So, just. Whatever you classify as your favorite sport. So say you're – I mean, it's a hard answer because you obviously play AFL, so you probably see it a little bit differently. Um, I'm just going to say your favorite – yeah, your, what's your favorite sport out of those? Start bench cuts. So if you had to watch one and you could only watch this one, you're starting that one obviously and then benching one that you may be able to go watch and then cutting a sport that you will never be able to watch again. Okay. Well, uh <laughs> It's weird because you're like, oh, AFL would be number one because we play it. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, start NFL, bench AFL, cut NBA. Mm, I'm gonna go start NFL, cut. Sorry, bench NBA, cut AFL. I reckon. Yeah. I reckon all the uh, all the highs and lows can get to you sometimes, and. When I'm, uh, you know, maybe I'll appreciate a little bit more once I'm done and the stresses of performing isn't there. But to answer that question right now, it would be what I just said because obviously we see AFL a little bit different than what our fans would see it or what, you know, what people who don't play AFL would see it. But no, that's how I yeah. generally feel. I'm glad we agree on the NFL too, by the way. Yes. I thought, I thought, season, I mate. thought you would have, I genuinely thought you would have said NBA. No, no, no. NFL for me. At the top, yeah, can't wait to hear. Can't wait to hear the feedback from those. Um, so there are there are our weekly start bench cuts that I know everyone loves listening to. Uh, questions. So we're going to do some questions. Ten or so minutes of questions, and then uh, we'll uh, yeah we'll wrap it up. So, mate, there's a, heaps and heaps of questions I got here. So I know you've got a couple. So you can uh, we'll do one for one. You go, mate. You give us a question from Stefan Campoli. Yes. How did you boys go with learning a new club song? Did you listen to it in your own time? Oh, well, to answer your question, no, because to be a, um, be totally honest, I'm a bit of a, uh, I do some weird stuff, and you obviously know that. I, I knew all the club songs, <laughs> so I, um, yeah, you did. No, you didn't. I knew all of them, other than the Gold Coast Suns, because still reasonably new and on. How do you, um. 
We are the sons hang on, hang on, of hang on. Gold Coast Sky. Yeah, so hang I do on. know the Gold so, Coast. When you say you're weird, you've listened and you've rehearsed every single AFL song. No, I haven't as rehearsed. A kid. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. As a kid, I have. Yes. So <laughs> I did that. And because I played all the AFL games on the PlayStation, so AFL Live 2004, which is the best one, I, uh, yeah, I, I uh, used to know all the songs. What about you? So hang on. So can you just reel off like a few lyrics from the Frio Dockers song? Free oh heave ho, oh, free oh, <laughs> the way to go. Hit them real hard. Yeah, mate, I know the songs. Sometimes I find myself singing them when I'm running out and I hear their song come and I start singing their songs. That's incredible. That is incredible. Um, what about you? Mine? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. definitely. I've, I've definitely uh, tried to learn. I tried to learn the Lion song as quick as I could. To be honest, the first few games that we won, I had no idea what I was singing. Like there was certain parts to the song that I didn't didn't know, so I was trying to still like look at other blokes and be like lip reading <laughs> what they're saying. Uh, Mate, Brisbane, but now I'm Brisbane's good. one of my favourite songs. They're yeah, I believe I believe their song is the France national anthem. Brado, yes, Brado says I'm right, and I love that. <laughs> love being right. I hate being wrong. Uh, I've got a question. Right. This is a good one for you, Joshy. So this is from. Uh, I'm going to presume his name's Harvey with a four and two threes in his uh, name. What's the best methods for after a game recovery so you're not feeling sore the next morning? Oh, great question. Um, best methods, something that I would do straight after a game is make sure I get a bit of protein intake. So up here, we have um, like a Masashi protein shake that we just have straight away. So that's number one. And then... Number two is ice bar or ice and recovery. Um, and then for me, straight after that, I'll put compression on. So, you know, compression socks and compression skins, and then I'll wear those for 12 hours at least. So, you know, in bed to sleep. The next morning I'll wake up and then um, take them off and then the next day kicks on. So for me, those three things are the number one things to do straight after a game. What about you? You any different? Nah, you you're right. I don't. Pretty much, I'm pretty much the exact same. Directly straight after the game, I think the stresses of what I've gotten better with is over time is actually eating like eating a good amount of food because you can never underestimate the importance of the right nutrients. And it doesn't. And we touch on like having macas and whatnot after a game. Honestly, really doesn't matter as long as you're loading yourself, reloading yourself. Sorry, with something in your body because could you imagine the amount of you know, sh- um, sugars and fats and proteins, carbohydrates we've lost during a game. So, yeah, mm. the the importance of being able to eat something and eat a significant amount where, you know, you feel like you've been able to replenish and and fluids as well. Fluid intake is probably another massive one, whether it's Gatorade or water or whatever it may be. It's definitely two of the things that I prioritize as well as the other stuff that you just said. Yeah, great question. Uh, I've got another good one. This will get good conversation going, I reckon. Um, from Reese Brooks with a double S. How do you boys go about maintaining your diet post season? And then he goes, "Love the pod, fellas." That was my next question, Joshy. That's a great one. Uh, well, for me personally, um, oh well, to be totally honest with you, I just don't change how I go throughout the year, as I've, you know. <laughs> I know you just want to. I know you want to. You want me to say something where you just, I don't know, laugh in my face or something, which is fair. But I've actually relaxed quite a bit now since Josh's, uh, Josh's um, moved away from me. Uh, funnily enough, because uh, I used to stress quite a bit what I used to eat and the amount of uh, macronutrients I was getting in, to be exact. Um, <laughs> but what I do is I, I literally don't change how I eat so I don't eat from footy season into off season and I know your answer is going to be different I'm not going to spoil it because I already know what you're going to say I know you're going to say you give you a certain amount of time to eat whatever you want (laughs) this and that but for me as I said I don't change going from the way that I eat in the normal in the season to the off season it's just my daily lifestyle my daily living so or eating now, you can give me your answer because I know your answer is going to be a lot different than mine. No, I like yours. I like yours. It's good because you, 
keep on top of everything. But for me, I have like pretty much three weeks of going to town, eat whatever you want, eat anything because you go through a year and um, like we've sort of spoken about today, you have ups and downs and, you know, mentally and physically your body's pretty cooked and um, your head at times is cooked. So to be able to recover and I feel like refresh for me is good to just have three weeks of eating Yep. Whatever you feel like. So if I feel like going to Macca's, I'll go to Macca's one day or, you know, for breakfast or something. Like things like that that you don't do in season that you can afford to do outside of the season. I just feel like doing that. So that just helps me then get my head and body right and back into training after three weeks or so. I love that. I love that, mate. You uh, can't wait for when we're – when I'm back, uh, you know, when the off season's done for – well, when the season's done for me, I'll head up and uh, spend time up in Brizzy with the girls. I'll be seeing you with uh, – I'll have my chicken salad and you can have your chicken Big Mac or whatever you want to have. <laughs> uh, this is from Isabella McLone. Sorry if I mispronounced uh, that. Favorite song at the moment. Give us your favorite song at the moment. Oh, geez, right now. Oh, surely there's um, a song that you listen to right now that's always on repeat. Not really, mate. You know me. I just listen to the radio. I love giving uh, the people a, um, a little bit of insight in what we love. So my favorite song at the moment is Lightning Crashes by Throwing Copper. I think that's... Lightning. Yeah. You would know it. It's an old song. I used to hear it when my um, my uncle used to play it all the time. So that song. And there's actually a really... There's a new song that I really enjoy. It's called Adore You by Fred Again. That's it. Lightning crashes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And the other one, as I said, is Adore You by Fred again. Um, yeah, which is really cool. So they're my two songs that I'm loving at the moment. Yeah. What about you? Well, I'm just flicking through. I, I, I'll just chuck on uh, up here. It's called um, Nova Naughties. I'll just put it on Nova Naughties in the, in the car, mate. But <sighs> um, if I'm the pick one, uh, you know, last night, have you heard of that one lately? You know, it's like last night. This one? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorites Good at the moment. Good song. Last night. Well done, mate. Couple more questions before we wrap it up because I've got a million, but we'll answer a couple in the next couple of weeks as well. This is from Max. Okay. Dot Vexel 20, Vex C20. Who is the greatest player to never win a Brownlow? Oh. That is hard, mate. That is a hard question. I have a couple that come to mind straight away for me. Anthony Kudafidis is one. He was a generational talent, definitely. Um, yep. He's one that comes to mind. And Andrew McLeod's another one that comes to mind who was, whoa, mate, at his best, oh, one of the smoothest move, movers you, you would have ever Seen play, and there's a lot of great players that don't want to Brownlow, but they're the two that really stick out to me. I can't think of oh, Brado's just sent us through Pendles. That's an He's, obvious uh, one. That that's is an true. obvious one. That that's is an a, obvious that's one. That's a big Sorry, one. Sorry, Pendles. Yeah, it's just because if Swanee wasn't playing there during like Swanee's era of dominance, Pendles dominated as well. He probably would have won a Brownlow as well. He's, yeah, you know what. Now that I, thanks, Brado. Now that I think about it, that's he's probably the number one player because he's literally achieved everything else. Yeah, I, mate, I agree with that. Pendles is um, something else, and he was at another level on Friday night against us too. He played well, unbelievably mate, well. All right, my, I've got one here, Andy and Guy. If you had to select one player from each other's team and put them into your team, who would it be? And it can't be each other. Um, I'm going to say Harry Andrews, Harrison Andrews. Yep, Harris Andrews. Because All right. I think for the obvious reasons. Mine would be Naughty. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, he. Whoa, imagine Naughty and Joey Danaher and Eric Hipwood together. Even he could play Naughty down back too. Uh, I've, got, I've got one more, one more question and then we'll wrap it up. And this is actually, and I love this. This is from Tom Caniff. Tom Caniff 6. <laughs> And would you like to see international rules return? Love from Ireland with an Ireland flag. How great is that, mate? We've got fans over in Ireland. That is great. Uh, yes, I would love to see international rules return. I think it would be a 
great thing to continue growing the game. I'm not sure why they actually got rid of it, um, but I don't know. yeah, I, I just remember being a kid and seeing all being able to actually watch those games, um, sort of in the off season, whenever it was. So uh, yeah, I'd definitely love to see it. What about you? Oh mate, I th- something that I would love. Yeah, I would love to have represented Australia at some form of footy event. I know I did it AOS and you did it AOS as well. I still got my Australian jersey that I'm extremely proud of. But yeah, I, I think it, as you said, great way to grow. And you see the amount of Irish players that come over and how good they are, man. Far out. So, so good. The way that the Irish players, Irish boys that come over who are taught how to kick and, you know, physically and athletically, they're so um so gifted. You know, they're as good as mm. um as any athlete in the world. So yeah, I, I love seeing. I used to love watching it when I was a kid. I used to love seeing players that on the AFL field who never, um, you'd never think would play with each other in a team, come together and you know play with each other and like you know stick up for each other. So yeah, I would uh, I would love a love a international rules game to come back or series to come back and just be a thing that continues on. Yeah, me too, mate. Me too. Anything else you got for us before we? Finish up, nah, mate. Uh, nah, I could talk forever as uh, as we're always like this. But I'm just uh, I'm hoping that uh, this time next week, um, season's still alive for us, and uh, yeah, we can have a um, another good episode. But um, yeah, mate, good luck for you this week. It's a big game for you. Hopefully, uh, you can get the job done. You. Do you like this tea? It's pretty That's cool. sick as yeah. I just want to give him a shout out. Winter vintage. On uh, Instagram, they sent me this tea. It's pretty sick. I was like, "Yep, that's cool. That's unreal." I'll give you give you more of a look. Have a look at that. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Well, Get if Gatorade's there. watching, I've got a Gatorade bottle. So <laughs> love a uh, love a sponsorship if you want to send us through some Gatorades. Nah, good episode, mate. Another good one. Uh, all the best this week, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and continue to like and support us. Uh, it's been a a great journey so far, and we're looking forward to the next few weeks as well. So. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you all next week. Thanks, mate.